Auditor General report into travel health visas is in. A report into the country's participation at COP26 tabled in Parliament and four police officers charged with manslaughter. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Wednesday, February 16th. The Bahamas' presence at the Conference for the Parties, or COP26, in Glasgow was a, quote, game changer for our country and our Bahamian people. And that's according to Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Philip Davis. The minister, the Prime Minister rather, this morning tabling the report in the lower chamber on the Bahamas participation at the meeting held in Glasgow, Scotland in November last year. He drew attention to the successes, achievements and plans that came out of this meeting and spoke to other projects and programs being implemented as the government prepares for COP27, including strengthening international cooperation on climate change, strengthening and deepening international par partnerships rather to secure the most beneficial commercial relationships in connection with climate change and sustainable development goals, among other things, that's based on this government's blueprint for change. In Glasgow, we also had the opportunity to engage with two, with the two largest financial donors within the United Nations system, along with other financial agencies. As a result of our participation at COP26, the Bahamas drew international attention to the impacts of Hurricane Dorian, including its effect on our gross domestic product. For years, we have advocated that GDP was not an accurate indicator of a country's unique vulnerabilities or economic stability. I made a point back in September when I addressed the UN's General Assembly and did so again in Glasgow. Prime Minister Davis, while noting that every country's economy is vulnerable to environmental shocks, says in recent years our annual hurricane season has demonstrated the extent of that vulnerability. And Hurricane Dorian, unprecedented in its size, duration and ferocity, showed how these single events could completely cripple our country. Against this backdrop, the use of GDP to determine the level of financial assistance offered to our country is not reasonable. Therefore, our delegation consistently made interventions throughout COP26 that drew attention to this stark reality. We forcefully drove home this argument in discussions with the Global Environment Facility, a significant financial donor for environmental programs. I'm thrilled to report that at the recent global meetings of countries in January, the Global Environmental Facility indicated that they would be moving away from, the, from using GDP as the primary economic indicator. Currently, the funding available to the Bahamas through the Global Environment Facility for 2022 to 2023 is approximately $7 million. As the Bahamas prepares to host its first ever One Young World Climate Change Summit, the Prime Minister reiterates that his government has made clear that the young people of the country are not just the future, but very much the key to the country's present. Prime Minister Davis announced in Parliament that the country will host a Youth Climate Change Conference in July. My government has agreed to host a Youth Climate Conference which, be, which will be held at the University of the Bahamas from July 6 to the 8th, 2022. Young people worldwide will be invited to engage with, the, with Bahamians from 15 to 30 years of age to debate and discuss issues including climate change mitigation, adaptation, loss and damage, and climate justice. Along with our private sector partners, we have committed to ensuring that at least two students from each of our family islands can participate in this event. And we're going further. 
That said, Prime Minister Davis also announced the appointment of two climate youth ambassadors to help the Bahamas engage and empower young people on the world stage. Those two young persons include Maya Delaney and Bradley Watson as the first two youth ambassadors to hold such a post. And as we make preparations for the Bahamas to be well represented at COP27 in Egypt, my government, assisted by partners in the private sector, is committed to ensuring that at least eight youth representatives will form part of the delegation from the Bahamas. These students will be identified through a national selection process. Ruby Nottage, the Honorable, sorry, the former retired justice Ruby Nottage has agreed to lead the committee making that selection. We hope all that we hope all young people interested in climate change will put themselves forward in what is, ex what is expected to be a competitive process. And we will continue to do what we can to ensure that the voices of young Bahamians can be brought to the highest level of international discussion, debate, and negotiation. Yes. As Prime Minister Davis puts it, the Bahamas is one of the countries most vulnerable to climate change. To do nothing, to say nothing, not to show up, not to raise our voices and hands. Before traveling to COP26, I engaged with the Bahamas caucus of the One Young World Organization. Since then, my office has committed to partnering with the University of the Bahamas and One Young World to host a youth climate change dialogue tomorrow on February 17, 2022. Young people worldwide will participate and I look forward to their discussion. Yes. This engagement is the first of several initiatives by my, by my administration to connect, collaborate and strategize with young people on climate change matters collaborate and strategize with young people on climate change matters. Meantime, the Auditor General's report on the Ministry of Tourism's travel health visa for November 2020 to August 2021 tabled in the House of Assembly this morning. Here's Laurencia Smith with more details on that report. Deputy Prime Minister Tourism Investment and Aviation Minister Jessica Cooper told reporters that the former administration made many mistakes and the health visa is just one of them. Those were his comments following the release of the Auditor General report of the Ministry of Tourism, Bahamas Travel Health Visa. The 31-page report was tabled in the House of Assembly by the House Speaker on Wednesday, provides details on the health visa during the period of November 1, 2020 to August 31, 2021. It highlights that some contracts were issued not in accordance with the financial regulations, while some may have been issued only with a verbal agreement. The former administration made some mistakes. This is just a few of the many mistakes uh, they made during the administrative period. Uh, I point out though that uh, the, the response from the technical team at the Ministry of Tourism points out that uh, the time frame was very short. We wanted to reopen the economy. We wanted tourists coming back to our shores quickly and they wanted to act uh, expeditiously. I accept the answers they presented. The Auditor General has done a commendable job in issuing this report swiftly and the Ministry of Tourism and its technical team has put in place all of its management uh, responses. You may remember before coming into office, the Davis administration was very critical of the purpose of the health visa, particularly as it relates to Bahamians. While last November, the government removed the requirement for health visa for Bahamians. The visa was introduced by the previous administration as a COVID-19 policy for both Bahamians and locals to enter back or travel throughout the Bahamas. The Auditor General highlighted that in 10 months there was a gross net revenue of some $34 million and a total expenditure close to $24 million and a net amount of some $10 million was transferred to a consolidated fund. In relation to the numbers, uh, we will look further at the, uh, the question as it relates to the profit of the plan. Uh, suffice to say when it comes to uh, a plan 
like this that contains an insurance element. Uh, there might be a profit today, but down the road that profit could very well disappear. So suffice to say, it has to be looked at over a period of time. So I suppose at the end of this fiscal period, it would be an interesting look to go to the beginning of the process and then make a calculation at the end of this period. Meantime, the report revealed that some 906 thousand users applied for the visa during the 10-month period mentioned. Vendors included Bank of the Bahamas Canoe, the CAG Atlantic Insurance, and Port International. I'm Laurentia Smith for JCN News. Thanks, Laurentia. Four police officers stood before Magistrate Darren's Roll Davis this afternoon in connection with the shooting death of Danrico Alexander Carey on Saturday, November 13th. 29-year-old Archibald Miller, 30-year-old Thomas Thurston Jr., 29-year-old rather, year old Lee Dormius, and 29-year-old Kevin Greenslade were all charged with one count of manslaughter. The particulars are that shortly before 3 a.m. that day, acting on information from the operations unit, the officers went to a business establishment situated on Alexandria Boulevard, Nassau Village, where a male suspect was said to be in possession of a firearm. On arrival of the unit, the officers saw a male fitting the description of the suspect. Upon seeing the police, the suspect went into his vehicle and attempted to drive off in an easterly direction along Alexandria Boulevard. The officers, with their service weapon drawn, beckoned the driver to stop and exit the vehicle. However, he accelerated in an eastern direction towards the officers. Reportedly being in fear of their lives, the officers discharged their weapon in the direction of the oncoming vehicle. The driver managed to evade them and sped off. However, he collided into a vehicle that was parked on the northern side of the street and continued traveling east. A chase then ensued as the suspect turned onto Matthew Street. His vehicle crashed into another parked vehicle and came to a stop. The officers exited their cruiser in an attempt to make an arrest. As they approached the vehicle, they noticed the suspect exiting his vehicle, brandishing a firearm. As a result, the officers discharged their weapons in the suspect's direction, injuring him, and a pistol was recovered from the suspect. Emergency medical services were summoned, and the suspect was pronounced dead on the scene. The four officers were not required to enter a plea and were remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until April 25th for service of a voluntary bill of indictment. They may, however, apply for bail in the Supreme Court. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.